Okay, so you should be able to move between the position, velocity, and acceleration functions of time using differentiation or anti-differentiation. And now I want to look specifically at velocity differences. This is an important uh, important point in that it is very useful in deriving expressions that we need to be able to solve sp specific problems. Okay, and so uh, velocity differences. At this point, I'm going to assume we have two points in time, some initial time t sub i and some final time t sub f. And I want to ask the question, what is the change in velocity delta v during this time interval? Okay, well, delta v then is going to be equal to the uh, final velocity, and we're in one, we're still in one dimension, so I'll just say that's the x axis, was along the x axis, so the final velocity, <laughs> oops, uh, minus the uh, initial velocity along the x axis. So what is this? Well, this is the velocity function evaluated at the final time minus the velocity function evaluated at the initial time. Okay, well wait a minute. <laughs> this looks familiar. So if, I, if, if v is the antiderivative of some function, the difference of the, the antiderivative evaluated at two endpoints is equal to the integral of that function between those two times. So if I just apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to this problem, I get that this difference is equal to the integral from the initial time to the final time of the acceleration function. So you'll recall if I have a definite integral of some function over some interval, the fundamental theorem of calculus tells me that the, the, the value of this integral is equal to the antiderivative of this function evaluated at the uh, endpoint minus the antiderivative of this function evaluated at the initial point. So we can calculate velocity differences as the definite integral of the acceleration over that interval. All right, well, let's just do a, a simple example. I have uh, some acceleration is some polynomial, 7 minus 3t squared, and I want to know what is the uh, change in velocity between uh, t is equal to 1 and 3 seconds seconds, what is delta v, all right? Well, that's just application. This is now the, the change in velocity between one and three is now the integral, initial one and final three of the acceleration, which is seven minus three t squared dt. Well, this is the a polynomial. I know the indefinite integral of a polynomial, so that's seven t minus uh, 3t cubed divided by 3 evaluated at 1 and 3. The 3's cancel just to give me 1. So that's equal to, let's say, 3 goes in 7, so that's uh, 21 minus uh, 3 cubed, which is 27. Okay, and this is minus then uh, 1 into here, which is 7 minus 1 cubed, which is 1. Right. So this looks to be minus 6 minus uh, 6, or minus 12 meters per second. So with this acceleration, there is a change in velocity of negative 12 meters per second between the time interval of t is equal to one and uh, t is equal to one to and t equals three seconds. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at a graphical approach um, or graphical representation to to this idea. Okay, so here's I'm going to draw a graph some acceleration here and then some velocity down here, and I'm going to look at these graphs together, so I'm going to keep the times at the same. All right. 
Okay, so let's say I have this um, an acceleration here that has some value of two. Oh, I, I'm going to say these are these are all each one of these lines is a second. So there's one second, there's two seconds, there's three seconds. Okay, so I have some acceleration that's equal to two meters per second squared for one second. Okay. And so I want to know what the change what is the change of velocity that occurs over that interval? Well, that change in velocity is equal to the integral of the acceleration uh, over that time interval. And I know that um, an, a the graphical representation of an integral is the area under this curve. So I can just read off from the graph that, the change in velocity is the area of this curve, which has a base of uh, one second um, and a height of two meters per second squared, or two meters per second. So the change in velocity over that interval is uh, zero, is zero to well, it depends on the initial. <laughs> it depends on the initial velocity. Let's say our, our initial uh, velocity is equal to zero. So our change of velocity is two meters per second. Okay, so now I can get quantitative on my graphs. So here's two, and so my, uh, my slope is going to be the same throughout this interval because the acceleration is constant, and I know that the velocity, as say it starts at zero, and since if the change is two meters per second, it's going to have a final value at two meters per second. Okay, so now let's say from the next interval my acceleration is zero, and it's zero throughout. Well, that tells me the change in velocity is the area under that curve, which is zero, so that tells me the velocity doesn't change over that interval. Velocity doesn't change, that means it's constant. Okay, so in this next interval, I'm going to say my acceleration uh, decreases linearly from zero to negative two. Okay, fine. What is my change in velocity during that integral? Well, again, the graphical representation of the integral is going to be the area under the curve, so the change in velocity is one half times the base, which is one second, times the height, which is two meters per second squared, uh, and it's negative, it's below the axis, so as I we might say a height of negative two meters per second squared, and so we get a change of velocity of negative one meters per second. So this tells me that the uh, velocity is going to go from, uh, it starts with two, and it ends at one, because, so this is, right, delta V is going to be V final minus V initial, and if my change is negative one, and my initial is two, then my final will have to be one. All right, um, but it's not a straight line, of course, if I think about, you know, here, the change in velocity here is a little bit, and as it, as it goes further and further, the, the, the velocity change is getting greater and greater per step. And so it starts out not changing very much and then changing more and more. It changes faster and faster as it gets closer to the edge. So it ends up curving down to the end point, which is one meters per second squared. Okay, so here, looking at the graphical representation, we can use this uh, information and the graphical representation of integrals to be able to extract quantitative information between the acceleration and the velocity graphs by uh, calculating these velocity differences.